Let me introduce myself. No, my name is Kai, and I'm one of the pastors of uh, Destiny Church. And it's a privilege to share the word to you this this afternoon. No? So I guess um, tayo tayo yung mga boboto dito sa Manila tomorrow. No, <laughs> uh, maraming wala. Uh, um, I think no movie sila and to um, to exercise our right to vote. Anyway, um, yon. Before we move further, no, sino pala nandito for the very first time? Do we have first time guests in the house? Can you just raise your hands quickly so that we can acknowledge you? Yon. All right. Welcome, bro. I believe meron din dito sa kita. Ayon. So um, uh, let me just um, no say to our first timers na we are so glad to have you guys here and um, pwedeng nasa ibang lugar kayo no pero you chose to be here with us and we believe na hindi aksidente yon. No, we believe that God has something amazing in store for everyone no first timers or end timers no and uh, maybe you're wondering no, why do we call ourselves a destiny no sabihin nyo nga destiny destiny so we call ourselves destiny because we really believe in that word no we believe that every one of us here no ko na nakaupo diyan yung mga katabi mo every one of us here is a person of destiny no maaring hindi ka conscious doon no? maaring hindi mo pa nare-realize yun, no? dahil sa hirap ng buhay. Tama ba? Sino sa inyo may mga pinagdadaanan? Uh, mga hindi nagsalita, I'm sure meron. <laughs> um, lahat tayo may mga pagsubok sa buhay. And sometimes, we tend to think na aksidente na yung buhay natin, right? It's a, it's a total failure. But we believe that we are a people of destiny, you know? And that our God is a God of destiny. In fact, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, it says here, Sabi ng Lord, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So this is God speaking to every one of us, no? particularly during that time na ang daming pinagdadaanan ng nation of Israel, no? sinabi niya itong mga katagang to, no? na mayroon akong plano para sa inyo. And it's the same words that God wants us to understand this afternoon, na you have a destiny, kahit ano pa yung pinagdadaanan mo sa buhay. No? And if you have, you know, um, if you have family or friends na, na they need direction and purpose in life, no? invite them to come here no? next Sunday. Right? And if you are that person, we believe that you came to the right place. Tama ba, Destiny? Alright, so that's why we call ourselves Destiny. So shall we pray before we go into the Word? Father, we thank you for this, this afternoon that you've gathered us here, Lord, to, to worship you. Father, more than just being emotional, Lord. Change us. Now take us to a place wherein we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us to understand, Lord, how it is to really worship you. And uh, Father, I pray that we will come out of this place changed, moved, Father, we love you and we surrender everything to you. Remove every distractions that may be residing in our minds or in our hearts. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Can we give a clap to the Lord? Yeah, I hope you're all excited for the word. Um, so um, this, this, this Sunday, you know, we're going to start a new series on worship. Sabi niya, worship. And uh, we just we just recently concluded yung series natin about um, the truth. No, truth matters. And uh, when we uh, when we started off this year, no, one of our slogans is to is to train to win and to win to train. No, um, familiar ba kayo don? I hope na na um, na intindihan yun na yung yung slogan na yun, yung objective natin for this year. No, and we started off with yung series natin about practicing the presence of God. How many of you were there? Now you learn so much from that. No? So it's the, it's the idea that um, to be in the presence of God, it's, it, 
it can be done everywhere that you are, right? In your work, in your uh, family, doing some chores, no? managing your business, that we can actually experience the presence of God wherever we are planted. And then the next series is about um, the truth. No? We talked about how important the truth is and how it is very important to ground our life on the word of truth. And right now, we're going to start a series on worship. And... Um, now, when we talk about worship, I believe that one of the things that first comes to mind is maybe a church, right? Now, maybe um, something spiritual. But I want you to understand that there's nothing really that, I mean, there's nothing overtly spiritual about that word, no, worship. Because every one of us, regardless of how religious you are, no, um, Maybe you're here, you don't even believe in God. No, maybe you just got invited. I want you to know that everyone worships. Lahat tayo. Right? No one is exempted. Now, let me show you a bunch of pictures. I think uh, we did this last year. No? Pero uh, let me just show you some pictures. Yan. Looks like worship, no? <laughs> right? Um, sige, no? Can you... Um, go to the next picture. Wow, right? And you would um, you would think that this is no um, this can be an image taken from a worship service, but you would be surprised. Na yung unang picture, if you could go back to the next um, to the last picture, no, this is actually taken from a football game. Where it looks like they're worshiping. Yeah. And yung uh, yung pangalawang picture, it actually looks like in. No, it's in a service, pero you can find that same picture in a um, concert, in a Beyonce concert. <laughs> no, I don't know who you're uh, following, no? Pero that's, that's a picture that we see wherever we are. Right? So worship is not confined to a place like this. Every one of us, we worship. And let me just read um, some, some, some quotes. Now, this is from a man. Uh, um, if you were here last year, no, when we talked about worship, no, you would remember these words. So this is this was spoken by David Foster Wallace. No, he is actually an atheist and a very popular author, no, in the states. No, sabi niya, everybody worships. The only choice we get is what to worship. And the compelling reason for maybe choosing some sort of God or spiritual type thing to worship is that pretty much anything else you worship will eat you alive. If you worship money and things, if they are where you tap real meaning in life, then you will never have enough. Never feel you have enough. Worship your body and beauty and sexual allure and you will always feel ugly. And what and when time and age start showing, you will die a million deaths before they finally grieve you. Worship power, you will end up feeling weak and afraid, and you will never and you will need ever more power over others to numb you to your own fear. Worship your intellect, being seen as smart, you will end up feeling stupid, a fraud, always on the verge of being found out. But the insidious thing about these forms of worship is they are unconscious. They are default settings. Right? So ano yung sinasabi ng isang atheist no, slash intellectual author kay, uh, ni, um, in the person of David Foster Wallace? Everyone worships. Right? It's a question of what or who you worship. Right? So what is worship? Well, um, I guess... Mas madaling pag-usapan to by first defining what is not worship, right? And then we're gonna talk about a definition of worship. So, worship is not just singing songs, right? Worship it's it's not the third song that makes you cry in the praise and worship set, though that's part of worship. But it's more than singing songs, right? So, worship is more than just you know, uh, making those gestures, no, tiyataas mo yung kamay mo. No, I believe, no, no we, we have a picture of the different worship moves, no? Um, RG, can we show? 
Yan. Are you familiar with those moves? Ni yung nasa baba no Rocky. No, we can call that the Joe M. <laughs> Is Joe M here? Um, right? <laughs> no, I love Joe M. But, you know, it's more than just doing these worship moves. No, sometimes when we, you know, when we do those things, no, yung favorite ko dyan, yung nandito yung ano, yung nasa may bandang puso yung kamay. Yung pag medyo, no, tinatamaan ka na ng word and ng music. Right? But it's more than that, no? Worship is not just a one-time event. No, worship is not, no, it's not something that we do every Sunday and then we just forget about everything. Worship is supposed to, um, it's, it's, it's supposed to cover all of our life. It is something that we were made to do. Now, sabi ni John MacArthur, worship is any essential expression of service rendered unto God Listen, by a soul who loves and extols Him for who He is. Real worship, therefore, should be the full-time, non-stop activity of every believer. And the aim of the exercise ought to be to please God, not merely entertain the worshiper. Right? That is worship. It's giving to God what is due to Him. You know, sometimes... And I've been there before, no? no? I've been in a place wherein I go to the service and ang tanging objective ko is to receive. But just studying the, you know, the, what the Bible talks about, um, says about worship, no? Worship is all about giving to God what is true to Him. Right? And that is a problem in our culture right now wherein it's all about us. It's all about the self. Make me feel good, pastor. But we come here, and the right mindset is, I want to worship God. I want to give Him all the glory that He deserves. Right? Sabi sa Psalm 95, verse 6 to 7, no? Just quickly, I don't need to go there, but this just speaks so much about worship. No, sabi no, psalmist, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God. And we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Right? That is worship. No, and, and we can talk about kung saan nag-originate yung word na worship no in Greek and in, in um in in Hebrew but um you know one of the most helpful um siguro definitions is from from the English no um yung worship no it it comes from the word worship it's to ascribe value to something or to someone right? and in a sense that's a very good definition and we can and we can see in the bible kung ano yung priority ng worship that god is is um is very much about worship right in mark chapter 12 verse 29 to 30 sabi ng lord no jesus answered um, the most important commandment is hear o israel the lord our god the lord is one and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. No? So, anong sinasabi ng Lord dito? Ang pinaka-importante na pwede natin gawin. No? The first and greatest commandment is to love God, is to worship God with all that we are. Right? No? It's not even to love other people. That comes second. The first, the priority of our lives should be to worship God. That's the priority for man's existence. Man is made to worship God. And any departure from this end usually results to catastrophe. Now, how many of you would say na marami sa mga problemang no, pinagdaanan mo sa buhay, ang cause nun is no, naging, naging idol ng isang bagay sa'yo na hindi naman si Lord. Let's say it's a relationship. Let's say it's money. Let's say it's reputation. Right? Those things ha- happen. Right? 
So let me just give you four quick things no, about incorrect worship. And then we're going to spend some time no, in John chapter 4. That's where we're going to camp out. But just quickly, no, um, four kinds of unacceptable worship. And this came from John MacArthur. Um, number one, the no, first kind of unacceptable worship to God is the worship of false gods. I know what does that mean? Maybe the first image that comes to mind is um, yung, mga, yung mga anito ng mga graven image. Now, how many of you know ganun yung picture of a false god? Pag sinabing sumasamba to a false god, it's probably a statue, someone bowing down to a statue. But that's not necessarily the case. Yes, that's part of it. Now, sabi sa Exodus chapter 20 verse um, verse 3, you know, the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. In Exodus chapter 34, verse 14, no, the same book. No, sabi dito, For you shall worship no other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. See, this is not just limited to graven images. No, siguro no in our in our culture right now, no in our time right now, um, ang isang magandang example nito is the worship of ourselves. Right, so every time na ang sinusunod natin yung sarili natin, no, what we want, no, kung ano yung gusto ko gawin, kung ano yung plano ko sa buhay, without even thinking of what God thinks, of what God wants over our life. No, that's a good example of worshiping a false god. And there's a number of examples out there. You know, we can worship money. We can worship power. We can worship a type of body image. We can worship control. Okay? In Job chapter 31, verse, verses 24 to 28, you know, sabi ni Job, you know, this is a very good example of making Material possessions, a false god. No, sabi niya, if I have made gold my trust, or called fine gold my confidence, if I have rejoiced because of my wealth was abundant, or because my hand had found much, if I have looked at the sun when it shone, or the moon moving in splendor, and my heart has been secretly enticed, and my mouth has kissed my hand. This also would be an iniquity to be punished by the judges, for I have, for I would have been false to God above. Right? So, sabi ni Job, there's a really, now there's a real possibility that we can be here. No, we can be, we can talk a good game about worshiping God. But on the functional level, on a day-to-day -day level, where do you put your trust in? See, there's this concept of, of a functional idol. Sabi niyo nga, functional idol. Okay, no, para siyang ganito. When the going gets tough, when you're pushed to your limit, where do you place your trust on? When things are not going well in your life. That's a functional idol. You know, sometimes it's not God, sometimes it's money, sometimes it's other things. Now, second, um, um, second kind of unacceptable worship is the worship of the true God in a wrong form. Now, I'll go quickly on this. Now, a good example of this is when the nation of Israel worshipped yung golden calf. Right? So, um, third um, kind of unacceptable worship is the worship of, of the true God in a self-styled manner. When we choose to worship God, um, you know, through our own style, yung kung paano natin gusto, right? Without thinking of how God thinks, no? Without considering kung paano ba talaga tayo kinokomand ng Lord to worship. And a very good example of this is, you know, it can be found in, in Leviticus chapter 10. I don't need to go there. But if you're familiar with Nadab and Abihu, now, sino sa inyo familiar? Now, one of the good things about going to the Bible 
yung uh, Bible reading plan natin is I can assume that you actually have gone there. Right? <laughs> so, um, so we can see that these are the priests, no? si Nadab and Abihu, and, and uh, they were actually, um, they were killed. No? They, were, they were put to death because they, um, they offered some strange fire dun sa altar or unauthorized. No? It's just their own way. And fourth, worship of the true God in the right way with a wrong attitude. Worship of the true God in the right way with a wrong attitude. And this is more subtle. Right? This is more subtle. No, if we eliminate all false gods, all images of the true God, no, and all self-styled modes of worship, our worship will still be an unacceptable if the heart attitude is not right. That's, that's in a way kind of scary because you can know all the truths, but if you worship with a wrong heart, it's still unacceptable. Now, now those four things, now keep that in mind. Now we're going to go to John chapter 4. Verse 1. If you can go with me there, no, please go with me there. Um, I believe itong story ang to, it's a familiar story. Tama ba? It's the story of the woman of Samaria or the woman by the well. And if you've been with us, if you've been with Destiny for, for some time now, you would know that this is one of our favorites to use. Right, to explain kung gaano ka buti ng Lord. So in John chapter 4, verse 1, and you know, we'll go into this because I believe that this is a place where God spoke so clearly about how we should worship. Now, if you're going to look at the book of John, no, uh, you'll see that one of the objectives of John is to present Jesus, that He is our Savior. He is our he is our God. He is, no, He is the I am. <laughs> no, so let me read a few verses. Now, we're not going to read um, all, no, verse 1 to 30, but just some portions. Let me read verse 1. So, sabi dito. Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sikar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. You want to find some verses that talks about God being, um, Jesus being fully God yet fully human. This is one of the verses. <laughs> right? Nasabi doon, Jesus being tired. I mean, we never think Jesus as tired, right? Like, like physically tired, pagod, no, pinagpapawisan. But Jesus, um, evidently <laughs> experienced those things just like we do. So napagod siya, no, he, he, um, Magatumambay siya dun sa isang well. In verse 7, and here, here the story kind of intensifies. No? A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. So there was this uh, one on one interaction. No? The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, Ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now, do you guys get the drama behind the words? Right? So here was a woman, a Samaritan, a Gentile, and Jesus had a conversation with this woman. You know, this story doesn't just 
talk about worship, the worship is the main point. No, we can learn so much about how to reach other people. I mean, kahit pagod ng Lord, He was able to reach and minister. And this speaks so much to our role no, as, as leaders, no, as Christians. Right? And they had a conversation. So Jesus didn't mind about the no, yung mga cultural cues. No? Walang pakialam ang Lord sa mga ganun. So kinausap niya itong babaeng to. And Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with. And the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Verse 12, Are you greater than our father Jacob? He, he gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. No, naramdam niya yung attitude ng babae, yung may sass ng onte. No? Um, so, so nag-respond na yung babae. And Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. Just take that in for a minute. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. That the water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Now, let me stop there for, for a minute, no? Just to give you a background, no? Um, I guess some of you know this already, right? So, there was such animosity between the Gentiles, like the mga Samaritans, and, and the Jews. So, they don't have any relations, right? So, medyo mababa yung tingin ng mga Jews sa kanila. And, and um, no, we don't have time to go to the history, you know? Pero there was... There was a lot of things that happened in the past that led to this kind of relationship that they have right now. And this woman, as you can sense, no, she came there alone. At no, during a time na wala talagang pumupunta sa well. No, she came at a time no, um, medyo medyo mataas yung sikat ng araw. Why? Because may iniiwasan siya. See, going to the well is a communal exercise, no? Usually, it's done in the morning and in the afternoon, but no one goes to the well, or, or at least in our logical mind, no, bakit ka pupunta sa no, tanghaling tapat? Doesn't make any sense. Why? Because I, no, as we will see later, she's trying to avoid something. There was a stigma. In verse 16, Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband. And come here. After, after, no, um, after the woman says, "Sir, give me this water." No, no, ramdam niya yung desperation ng babae. Sabi ng Lord, "Call your husband." This very moment, Jesus was doing something. He was trying to unearth something, a, a wound, something painful, and come here. Verse 17, the woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Now, how many of you would say na, Jesus, but ang medyo harsh yun ah. Come on, yung totoo lang. Yung real talk lang dito. <laughs> Parang, Lord, ano ba? Alam ko namang alam mo, pero ba't kailangan diinan mo pa? But you know, sometimes God would have to do that so that we would have to drop yung mga bagay na pinangahawakan natin. See, for many of us, Maybe that's what God has been trying to do. You've been going through a painful experience. It's as if God is being harsh, but God is unearthing something painful so that He can heal it. Right. 
you know, Jesus is, you know, sabi nga nung sa ibang pastors, you know, Jesus is being a surgeon. He's putting out his knife you know, so that he can actually heal that wound. Some of us, that's what needs to happen this afternoon. And you can imagine, you know, when, when Jesus heard that, um, uh, when the Samaritan woman heard yung, um, yung command ng Lord, no, go call your husband, tasabi pa ng Lord, ah, anim na yan eh, pang pit. <laughs> no, lima na yan, tas pang anim na yan. Mm, ganun. Okay. And I'm thinking, um, ano kaya yung nararamdaman ng babae? Ano yung feeling na yung bigla nag-minister sa'yo yung word? Tapos parang naiiyak ka na sa loob. No? Tapos tinry mo baguhin yung topic. So, ever had a conversation like that with a friend? Yung medyo hurting na, pero mm, iba na lang, na no? change topic. No? Kamusta yung end game? Yan. Kamusta? <laughs> It's too painful. And that's, that's kind of what the woman did in this story. Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain. But you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Um, you know, I think the woman thought that she was changing the subject, but Jesus was still, you know, in, in the conversation. Jesus said to her, now listen, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. Her salvation is from the Jews. So let me just um, now walk a few steps backward no, in the story. Now we can see that this woman has had, you know, has been searching all her life. No. And for her, hindi naman graven images yung issues niya. Right? Of course, no, they're, no, they're worshiping the wrong God, but in In this conversation, ang issue na dinidil ng Lord is that she's looking for something. Now, she's been jumping from one relationship to another, trying to find that very thing that will fill the void. Sayo, ano yan? Right. She had been a poor steward of her thirst, a thirst only that Jesus can satisfy. She had spent most of her life running to broken cisterns that hold no water. Now she is offered the only water that will satisfy her and us. And that's the grace of the gospel. Now let me quote C.S. Lewis. No? Sabi ni C.S. Lewis in his book, Mere Christianity. Sabi niya, most people, if they have really learned to look into their own hearts, would know that they do want and want acutely something that cannot be had in this world. There are all sorts of things in this world that offer to give it to you, but they never quite keep their promise. Ever been there? Let me stop. Ever been there? Like, no, lahat tayo merong ganto eh. Just try to identify it in your own life. Lahat tayo merong ganto. If I can only have this, I will be this. Fill in the blanks for yourself. If I can only have this, I would be this. No, spend some time just thinking about it. What is that thing to you? And for this woman, it is this, this kind of relationships that she's been having. No, the long, no, sabi ni si Estuvis, no, to continue. But they never quite keep their promise. The longings which arise in us when we first fall in love or first think of some foreign country or first take up some subject that excites us are longings which no marriage, no travel, no learning can really satisfy. I am not now speaking of what could be ordinarily called unsuccessful marriages or holidays or, learn, or learned careers. I'm speaking of the best possible ones. There was something we have grasped in that first moment of longing which just fades away in the reality. I think everyone knows what I mean. The wife may be a good wife and the hotels and scenery may have been excellent and chemistry may be a very interesting job, but something has evaded us. Right? 
You know, that very moment when you finally got that thing that you really were desperate to have, and then when you got it, yes, there were moments of, you know, you were happy, you were satisfied, but ang question mo, what's next? Right. Now let me, um, again, no quote Blaise Pascal. This is, this is so amazing. No? What is it then that this desire and this inability proclaim to us? But that there was once in man a true happiness of which there would, there now remain to him only the mark and empty trace. Listen, which he in vain tries to fill from all his surroundings, seeking from things absent the help he does not obtain in things present. But these are all inadequate because the infinite abyss can only be filled by an infinite and immutable object. That is to say, only by God himself. What is Blaise Pascal saying? No, mahaba pa yung quote, di ko nabasahin yung buo. No? Sabi niya, there's a God-shaped hole in everyone. And try as you may, put it there, relationships, put there anything, money, fame. If it's not God, it's always going to fall short. Let me continue the story. And let me call the worship team. What is the keyboard? Verse 21. No, let me go there. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming. When neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. But the R is coming. Highlight that phrase, the R is coming. So I'm going to explain that later. And it's now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah is coming, He who is called Christ. When He comes, He will tell us all things. This is the amazing part. No? Another one of those mic drop moments from Jesus. Ayan. Ang sabi ng Lord, I who speak to you am He. Ako yun. Ako yung hihintay mo. continue until 30. Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman. And no one said, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? No one said that thing. Alam niyo bakit? I'm just assuming that the woman was already crying. Any moment na kalang. Let's not speak. Someone's emotional there. So the woman left her water jar and went away into town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. That's the key verse there. I am he. Jesus mentioned two things that I think is very important should be front and center when we talk about worship. Sabi ng Lord, the Father is seeking true worshipers. People who worship in, in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? How do we worship in spirit? Now let me define that. Now spirit talks about the human spirit here. The inner person. Sabi ng Lord that there's going to be a time when the location will not matter anymore. What you wear will not matter anymore. I mean, look at this place. This, isn't even, this is a cinema. Later, I think Avengers ulit dito. Tama ba? Sa mga mag um, Sabi ng Lord, there's gonna be a time where this 
do not matter anymore because God is seeking people who worship in spirit and in truth. See, if you're the kind of person who, who thinks checklist, that I need to be here, I need to look this, I need to be like this before I can worship. And there are even religious, there are even cults who would say that. Na kung hindi ka kasama dito sa gantong sec, hindi ka masisave. Ah. <laughs> Wish we have time. Right? Now basically what Jesus is saying here, and we can spend a few days just talking about this, just trying to unpack this. It's quickly, and I'm saying that it should be worship from the heart. Right. And if you would look at the Gospels, one of the, one of, yung laging kalaban ng Lord, kilala niyo yung grupo na laging naiinis si Lord, <laughs> mga Pharisees. Basically, Jesus was saying, memorize nyo lahat. Nagtatight kayo sa sobrang liit where you don't love me. So I'm not just talking about being emotional. I'm not talking about emotionalism. Because like I mentioned kanina, no, being emotional doesn't mean that you're worshiping. So I'd like to use the term moved. Right? No, a, a good um, verse that speaks about this, no, no, speaks about a worship from the heart is Psalm 51, verse 16 to 17. No? Listen. Sabi ni David, For you will not delight in sacrifice, for I would give it to you. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God, listen, are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. I mean, I mean si sabi ni David dito, hindi naman yung external si it has its place. But ang importante yung, yung broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, oh God, you will not despise. There's this guy, pangalan niya, Stephen Sharnock. Sabi niya, without the heart, it is no worship. It is a stage play. And acting apart without being that person really which is acted by us. A hypocrite. And the notion of the word is a stage player. We may be truly said to worship God though we lack perfection, but we cannot be said to worship Him if we lack sincerity. Right? So, the spirit, you know, worshiping from the heart is of primary importance to God. Real worship starts from the heart. It's not about the externals. And the second part of what Jesus mentioned, to worship in truth. What does it mean to worship in truth? This is so important, no? Um, sabi sa verse 22 in the same story, John chapter 4, sabi ng Lord, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. See, these uh, Samaritans, they're known for, as, uh, as scholars would say, na yung mga commentators, they would say na yung mga Samaritans, they merong worship na zealous eh. But sabi ng Lord, they do not know what they worship. See, it's very important that our, our worship is grounded in the word of truth. See, sikat na ngayon talaga yung, alam mo yung maging emotional ka lang eh. But is it grounded in the Word of God? Now listen to this. In Romans chapter 12, some of you know this, are very familiar with this verse. No no, um, no need to go there. Pero sabi, Romans 12, 1, sabi ni Paul, I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So key word, Therefore, now, Romans 1 to 11, Paul took the time to unpack truths. Biblical doctrine. 
Grabe no? the doctrine of sin. Paul talked about salvation, Jesus dying for us. Romans 9, grabe. Grabe yung 9. <laughs> okay? 10, 11. Anong sabi ni Paul dito? Therefore, in view of Romans 1 to 11, lahat ng natutunan nyo, offer your bodies as living sacrifice. You guys get that? That without the word, we would just be zealous, emotional. See, it's, it's a beautiful picture when that truth, that spirit collide. Yes, you're moved. You're driven to tears. And you're driven to tears by what Jesus did for you. Real worship not grounded on truth is not worship at all. Right? Our worship should be consistent with the truth revealed in God's Word. That is very important. How do we worship then? Right. So how do we worship? Or, or to put it in a different uh, wording, no? There are these requirements about holiness, about worship. How do we worship correctly? Now, because sino dito makakapagsabi na, I worship God perfectly. Right? Sino dito magsasabi na, I, I have my moments, pero minsan nahihirapan ako i-worship ang Lord eh. Right? Because of our own issues, because of sin. This Samaritan woman is a very good example. Here's the key. Let's go to verse 26. Let's go to the mic drop moment. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you. Indeed. No, I mentioned kanina, no, sabi doon, no, sabi ng Lord, for the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. What is Jesus saying? What's the R? Ano yung R na yun? Talks about His life, His death, and resurrection. After some time, we we'll go to the cross. Si lahat tayo dito na we, we haven't loved Jesus with God, with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our souls. But someone did for us. Jesus. No, sabi ng Lord sa kanya, I am I who speak to you in Him. I am your Redeemer. I will do what you cannot. I will die on the cross in your place so that you can actually worship God. So that you can actually step in and worship God and have a relationship with God. Right. I'm reminded of the story in Luke chapter 7 verse, verses 36 to 50. If you know that story, that's one of the most beautiful stories in the Bible. It talks about a sinful woman who was forgiven. Familiar? One of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he, went, he, and he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. And behold, listen, behold a woman of the city who was a sinner. When she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment and standing behind him at his feet, weeping. She began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, Say it, teacher. 
Ang galing yun, no? Sabi ni Simon, if this man were a prophet, binasa nga ng Lord yung utak ni Simon. Sinagot pa. Galing. Verse 41, A certain money lender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, The one, I suppose, for whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, You see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss. But from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Listen, church. Therefore I tell you her sins, which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little loves little or worships little. And he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. I'll give you a quick formula. Being forgiven much leads to loving much. Being forgiven much leads to worshiping much. You guys understand that? If you're here and you're getting a little bit cold in your relationship with the Lord, forgiven much, love much. Um, I like what Pastor Carlo mentioned in the 10 a.m. service kanina. No? So he was defining worship and he mentioned a definition. I think it's from Francis Chan. No? Sabi ni Pastor Carlo, worship is all of me responding to all of you. That's amazing. Like all of me, don't sing, <laughs> responding to all of you. In light of what Jesus did for you on the cross, in light of what He did, in light of the sacrifice, won't you worship Him with your all? This woman, you know what's what's so amazing, Pano? If John chapter 4, it talks about the promiscuous woman who was jumping from one relationship to another. And we don't really know the backstory. But John chapter 3, it talks about a different kind of person who needs Jesus. Nicodemus. <laughs> both, both polar opposites. Here's Nicodemus who knows the truth in a sense but is not moved by it. And here was a woman who's, who don't know the truth. Both people, they need Jesus. You would know that Nicodemus would one day become a follower of Jesus. Being forgiven much leads to loving much. See, we need to recover that sense of what Jesus did for us. See, maybe you're here and you're saying, layo ko na. Ano yun? Maybe some of you are even saying, ito na yung last service ko eh. Grabe na yung, grabe na yung ginawa ko, grabe na yung pinagdaanan ko. The woman in Luke chapter 7, she had no qualifications qualifications niya, bakit siya kay Lord? Kailangan niya si Lord. Worship is very important. What you worship will drive where your life is going. It will define kung ano yung magiging buhay mo. There's only one person who is worthy of our worship and it's Jesus one person is worthy of our worship. It's not your relationship. It's not money. All those things, yung mga bagay that we 
usually try to you know, which becomes our false gods in a way. Of course, we would not call it that. All those things, when it's taken away, you have nothing. That's why gumuguhu yung mundo natin. But only one person is worthy to be worshipped. His name is Jesus. Let's all stand. your worship is it relegated lang or is it during Sundays only how's your everyday worship now let me um, let me give you some time no? just, just between you and the Lord haven't worshipped in um, recent memory. You're not moved anymore. Maybe nakahawak ka sa isang false god. Tapos kinuwa. Ngayon hindi mo alam kung saan ka kape. still hope. Maybe you're here dami mong nagawang mali recently feeling mo hindi ka makalapit kay Lord. Gusto mo mag-worship pero alam mo may meron kang kailangan i-deal kay Lord. And this is a good time to to deal with it with God. Therefore I, therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. Father, we thank you for the cross. Father, we thank you that you are our Savior. That you said to that woman, I and Father, I pray that you would fill our hearts with gratitude, with thanksgiving and praise and worship. It's like this woman who was sinful and he broke the alabaster jar, Lord. He gave, she gave it her all because she loves him. Father, I pray that we will be a people who worship in spirit and in truth, Lord. That our worship would be grounded in your word. But also that our worship will be moving, that it will start from our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. Father, I pray that our daily life, Lord, not just during Sundays, that our hearts will sing in worship, Lord, at work, in our families, wherever we are, Lord. Holy Spirit, empower us to worship in spirit and in truth. Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Give that.